Our next chapter is chapter 11. This is again part of unit three. This is going to be covering anatomy of the abdominal cavity and more specifically the digestive structures of the abdomen. So first off, we need to figure out what peritoneal means. And this just means anything that's found in the peritoneal cavity. And what the peritoneal cavity is, is it's the abdominal pelvic cavity. So part of the abdomen, part of the pelvis. Now, just like we saw with the pleura, and just like we saw with the pericardium, there will be a double layered membrane that's gonna surround the peritoneal cavity. And so the parietal peritoneum will be lining the cavity itself. So again, not physically touching any organs, whereas the visceral peritoneum will be physically touching all of the organs found in the peritoneal cavity. And serosa is another term um, you'll see used instead of visceral peritoneum. The serosa is usually the outer layer of one of these organs, but again, that is going to be continuous with this visceral peritoneum. So looking at this picture, we can see the membrane surrounding the cavity of the peritoneum is called the parietal peritoneum, whereas what's covering each of these actual digestive structures is going to be the visceral peritoneum. Now in this picture, we can see the different layers of one of the intestines. And so the outermost layer is gonna be the serosa or also the visceral peritoneum. So it's physically touching the organ. Now we also have a term called retroperitoneal and retro is not referring to anything old school, but this is actually behind the peritoneal cavity. So retroperitoneal is deeper or more posterior or behind the peritoneal cavity. So there's some organs that are found in this region here. The kidney, spleen, part of the aorta, and part of the inferior vena cava are all going to be located retroperitoneal. Now, these structures actually aren't covered by the peritoneal membrane. They don't have a serosa. They don't have a perito uh, visceral peritoneum. They actually have something called adventitia, which is just going to be connective tissue. We also have something called the mesentery which is a part of the peritoneal membranes. This is just going to extend from the dorsal wall or just the posterior wall. And it's just gonna hold the small intestines in place. And so that's what we see right here. We see this membrane coming out from the dorsal wall and just extending out to the small intestines and just holding them in place here. That's called the mesentery. We also have the liver, which will be our first digestive structure that we're gonna figure out. Now it's located in the upper right quadrant. Now it might be also useful to divide the abdomen into quadrants, so four little regions. The upper right quadrant is where we will find the liver. The liver has four lobes, it has a right lobe, which is generally going to be the largest. There may be some variations in each and every one of us, but for the most part, the right lobe is the biggest. Left lobe will be next to the right lobe. And they're separated by something called the falciform ligament, which we'll get to in just a second. We also have the quadrate lobe. Now, the quadrate lobe is going to be projecting inferiorly from the right lobe. We'll see what that looks like here in a second. We also have the caudate lobe, which is going to be on the posterior side. Now, the falciform ligament, again, separates the two lobes. And what it's going to be doing is it's also going to help connect the liver to the ventral or belly side of the abdominal wall. We're also gonna find the gallbladder that's gonna be on the inferior side of the liver. And the gallbladder is another organ that's actually going to be storing and concentrating the bile that the liver is producing and sending over to it. So here's a picture of the liver. We have the right lobe right here, and then we have the left lobe. Now in between them, we have the falciform ligament. There's also another ligament that connects with it called the round ligament that help hold it in place to the ventral abdominal wall. We can see a little bit of the gallbladder sticking out underneath there. 